Welcome back to the channel. Uh, we've got a um, bit of an, uh, an educational, instructional video today. Um, I made a video in my last uh, Cadwell Park vlog from 2nd of October, if you look up here, but I'll put some overlay on now. It was when I bought my uh, AIM Solo 2 DL. And uh, on that video, some of the uh, onboard footage that I showed on that video had got uh, a data overlay. Uh, but it was sort of like RPMs, gear indicators, lean angles. I've got a really advanced data overlay on that, and I must have had at least uh, 50 to 100 questions from people across all sorts of different uh, social media platforms saying, how did I get that data on there? How did you do it? How did you do it? Um, so, honestly, I thought I'd just make a quick video and show you. It's much easier than replying to every single one. Um, so from from just so just to step back a bit. So before that, what I've been doing is there's a couple of ways to do data overlay on your videos. So the first thing you need GPS, right? So you can either download an app like Track Day Genius. I use Race Chrono Pro, for example. Some of them you have to pay for, some are free. I just find Race Chrono Pro just it's a little bit smoother how it works. But to play around, you know, go on a Track Day app. Harry's Lap Times, I think, is another one. Um, just Google them and and, and do that. So, but you need to download one of the apps. Uh, you can use your phone for GPS, but it's not very good quality, and you risk you run the risk of uh, dropping signal or getting like weird readouts and stuff. You can buy a GPS receiver, <clears throat> which you can fit onto your bike. Again, just Google bike GPS receivers. I'll, I'll put a couple up um, on screen. But you need to put that on your bike, uh, and then you need to connect your phone to it and one of the lap uh, apps, the, uh, the lap timer apps. Uh, but the the diff the problem that I have with that is you need to keep your phone on you, so you have your phone in your leathers and it's just it's not ideal. Um, the other thing is GoPros from I think it's Hero Six onwards, but it might be five. Fact check that. Um, come with an inbuilt GPS feature. So if you turn the GoPro on, wait a second, let it acquire GPS, um, it will it will do that. And that's actually got quite a strong GPS signal. Um, so what I personally was doing is using the GoPro GPS and then you have to download it to your phone uh, and then import it into Race Chrono Pro and do it that way. But again, it's a bit clunky. Um, sometimes it wasn't working properly and you just, this is a hit and miss. So I just, I went to a lot of research to find out how I could um, get some decent data overlay properly and reliably uh, onto my lap footage. Cause you know, one of the big parts of my channel is doing track day vlogs. And I just think that it would, you know, it's a bit more interesting uh, having all that data on there. But for me, a really big thing for me having that. So, for example, a real good example is uh, uh, the the throttle position data. So when I uh, finally got the throttle position data on my Carol Park flip video, it highlighted an improvement area for me that I would never have known without that data. I genuinely, genuinely thought that on the straights I was fully pinned, 100% gas, you know, hanging on for dear life. Ah. Uh, but when I look at the data, I'm not. I'm nowhere near. Actually, there's low. I'm not on the gas early enough. I'm not on it 100% even when I feel like I am. But I only noticed that from having this data. Um, so for me, that was worth trying to go that extra mile um, to, uh, to to get a bit better data. So the GPS from GoPros or the GPS lap timers just don't cut it. They're not enough. You you can't get any of that. So what I did is I bought one of these. Uh, AIM Solo 2 DL. Now the only way you're going to get data from your uh, bike, so throttle position, what gear you're in, lean angle, etc., is having a connection to the ECU. So it's not straightforward, you know, there's a cost involved. I think this was £630 uh, and then I had to connect this via a cable, which goes in here, into the ECU of the bike. Um, uh, but then that gives me, uh, it opens up a massive world of data. Um, so I'm just going to show you what I can get and how to do it basically. So everybody's asking me how I do it. So I take this, uh, you turn it on at the track, plug it into your ECU, go and do your lap times. It knows where you are by GPS. It knows what track you're at. It knows when you started. It's all automatic. Amazing. Get back, turn this on. See the mostly motorbikes logo. <laughs> it's the little touches. Thanks Tony at Parkit for that. So you turn this on and then we'll just move over to the screen now. Um, 
So let me show you. You need to open up the software that comes with the AIM Solo, uh, which is called Race Studio 3. So we open that up, uh, and what we can see, uh, let's connect the device. So you click on the Wi-Fi button here at the top, click on your Solo, it'll notice that you've got one turned on, click Connect on here. Just give it a second. Right, so now you can see here that your AIM Solo 2 DL is connected. So click on here, it's scanning it now. Now if you've got anything uh, in there, click on the download and download whatever files you've got in there. All right, I've deleted mine just to keep the memory clear. So you click on the downloads and then you can go over to this one here which says analysis. So if you click on analysis, you can see these are my Cadwell Park um, sessions from the October track day that I did. Uh, and if I just click on one session, um, you can see down this left hand side here, these are all the parameters that have been captured from the ECU and from the AIM as well. And it's truly mind boggling what you can get. The ones that say RSV4 have come from the ECU. Uh, so, you know, you've got things, that you, you've got gear, uh, speed, RPM, cool stuff that you need. But then you've got stuff like uh, Magneton. Now, I actually looked into what this was. What Magneton is, is it's the magnetic pulses coming from the Earth's core which uh, according to AIM, and I did email them about this, according to AIM, if you start to lose GPS signal for whatever reason, that can take over and fill a bit of the gap in the GPS signal because it can tell where you are from the magnetic pulses. Well, I have no idea. Uh, but, you know, stuff like internal battery. I mean, just look at everything on here. Um, a massive amount of information. But look, for, um, for the purposes of this, so all we do is we go over to database and then essentially you need to just export this uh, into a, a file so you go here to um, uh, here export and then export it into a uh, you know any, any file create one so you've got race render for example uh, here export it into there and then you come out here so what that's done is it's exported all that data from your aim and from your bike cc2 into a readable file so then what you need is a product called Race Render 3. So let's just open Race Render and I'll show you what you do with that data once you've got it. So yeah, so once you've exported your, um, uh, your data from AIM, what I do is I export it by session just to make it easy. I, 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 when I'm do making videos, I'll make them session by session. So if you export each session, uh, name it, you know, whatever, Cadwell, 2nd of October, session one, right? And you get uh, an Excel file, basically, essentially how you get the data. So then if we, um, if we open up Race Render, so this is Race Render. Uh, one second, let me show you this. Cool, so if you open up Race Render here, um, just choose one of these data overlays. So I use this one, but I mean, I need to experiment. I've not tried them all. It looks like there's some pretty cool ones. Just have a play around with this and see what you like. And what you next need to do is import your video file first. So import your video file, click add video file. Uh, if you look here, this is uh, session four from a Cadwell uh, session that I did. Uh, we don't want that one. So let's go, uh, let's find the Cadwell uh, October one. This is GoPro, uh, and what you do, so if we click on this one, so if you just click on the top one, now look, it automatically knows that that's part of a set. So what GoPro sometimes does, if you go on a 20 minute session, you might actually get three different files for that 20 minute session. Race Render recognizes that and knows. So you just click yes, because it's asking if you wanna stitch them together basically. Then what it'll do is, if you have your GoPro GPS turned on, which I do as a backup, uh, it says, it'll notice that you've got GPS and it's asking you, do you want to use that data file from the GPS, from the GoPro footage? In this instance, because we're using the AIM, no, we definitely don't. So we hit no. The next thing we need to do is click add data file. So we click add data file here and then we go to our uh, folder where we stored it and you can see here, two, three, four, five, etc. So you find the session that you want to go for, click session one, and that's it. You use that as your data file. And what that's going to do now is it's going to overlay that Excel data on top of your video. 
Uh, and the only thing really left to do is so just click OK. Uh, the only thing really left to do, again, uh, click whatever template you want to use. So what I did is I made my own, um, called it David. And the reason I made my own is you can choose on here. So let me just show you. So once you do that, uh, you can actually choose if you see, so you can click speed, speed lows and highs, G-force, you can set maximum speed, 200 to stretch, <laughs> uh, lap counters. So I, these, these are what I set, but I always have uh, best lap so far selected. And then you've got uh, RPM, yes, shift light, yes, gear indicator, yes, throttle position, definitely. Um, you can set minimum and maximum red lines and then just click OK. And there you then see that all pops up. Uh, and then the, ne the only thing left to do once you have all that on there is synchronize the data. And the best way that I found to do that is use side by side. So you hit side by side um, and it will give you uh, a view of the data and a view of the track, basic, uh, the view of the video, and you just line them up uh, and it's as simple as that. So. Whilst I appreciate that this is a fair bit of effort um, to go to, uh, to overlay that data, much more, there's kind of a lot more steps and cost and everything involved than just your basic GoPro GPS. You get more information, so what do you want? You know, I'm, I'm doing this as a, as a YouTube channel, so for me it's worth the effort to have that data of RPM and gear uh, selector, and I got so many comments and positive remarks about the data and questions, that's why I'm making this video, that it, it, you know, it pays off for me to do it rather than just using uh, GoPro GPS. But to be honest, if I weren't doing YouTube and it was just for me, um, GoPro GPS is probably fine. Um, it's up to you, what do you want to do, basically. Um, but look, I hope you found this video uh, informative. This is how I do it. This is not the only way to do it, but I just found the AIM uh, the Solo 2 connecting into the ECU, how easy and automatic the aim is, literally just turn it on, record your lap times for you, you don't have to worry about it or do anything, uh, and then all this data that I can get out of the aim. Uh, and then, you know, it, when I get round to it, I can start comparing sessions, comparing lap times, that's a whole other video, but I just wanted to do a reasonably quick video just to show you how I actually get that data and overlay on top of the video, because that was the main question asked. Um, we could go a bit more in depth into the AIM software itself, and you know, com you know, am I quicker in this sector or that sector? Another day. Um, but for now, look, uh, I hope you found that interesting. For those of you that are asking the question, some of you probably switched off ten minutes ago, which is cool too. But look, uh, thanks very much for watching. I appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll catch you on the next one.